Do you think that Ilhan Omar understands why her comments were problematic? And what happens if this happens again? Well, uh, first of all, thank you for the question. Uh, I don't, I don't think that um, that the congresswoman is uh, uh, perhaps appreciate the full weight of how it's heard by other people. Although I don't believe it was intended in any anti-Semitic way. But the fact is, if that's how it was interpreted, we have to remove all doubt, as we have done over and over again. Uh, we're working now on a resolution, to see uh, when we bring it to the floor, uh, that will, again, speak out against anti-Semitism, uh, anti-Islamophobia, anti-white supremacy, and all the forms that it takes, uh, that our country has no place for this. But on anti-Semitism, we voted a resolution on that just recently. When I was uh, a couple weeks, a week and a half ago or so, in uh, at the Munich conference and then in Brussels for the NATO meetings, at every meeting, at every level, at the highest levels, our delegation impressed upon our European allies the importance of fighting anti-Semitism in our country. This is well before the UN statement that, that uh, emerged this weekend. But when it did, uh, it was important for me to speak to the member first before we would proceed. She was in Africa. Uh, after I spoke to her, members had different tacks they wanted to take, some their individual statements, some thinking we should have a resolution. I thought the resolution should be enlarge the issue to anti-Semitism, anti-Islamophobia, et cetera, anti-white supremacist. And that it should not mention her name, and that's what we're working on, something that is one resolution addressing these, these forms of hatred, not mentioning her name, because it's not about her, it's about uh, the, these forms of hatred. Does she, she need to apologize? To that end. She hasn't apologized. Does she need to apologize? Well, maybe she may need to explain that she did not, that it's up to her to, to explain, uh, but I do not believe that she understood the full weight of the words as I say, when you're, a Congress, when you're an advocate out there, as I was, so I appreciate all the enthusiasm that comes into our Congress. I've told you that before. That, that was me pushing a stroller and carrying those signs. So I understand how advocates come in uh, with their enthusiasms. Um, but when you cross that threshold into Congress, your words weigh much more than when you're shouting at somebody <laughs> outside. And uh, I, I feel confident that her words were not based on any anti-Semitic attitude, but that she didn't have a full appreciation of how they landed on other people where this, these words have a history and a cultural impact that may have been unknown to her. Madam Speaker, thank you. And to that end, I, I know Did I call on him? Did you hear me? <laughs> <laughs> you, you, sure, you sure looked at me. So. <laughs> That's right. Thank you. Does that count? Okay. No, go ahead. That was my, my question. Go ahead. Go ahead. But thank you. Uh, there was concern about motions to recommit yeah. that your side has had, and uh, I noticed how important HR1 is to 